Hello and welcome to Gamers Without Borders. My name is Banks and I'm honoured to be joined by His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar bin Sultan Al Saud, the President of the Saudi Esports Federation. We managed to have a chat at the previous Gamers Without Borders in 2021. So I just wanted to quickly ask you how this past year has been so far. Uh, well, first of all, you know, thanks, uh, thanks for having me, um, and thanks for everyone who's who's tuning in. This is, you know, one of my one of my favorite events of the year. I get to have a little bit more more fun with this and less uh, less in depth work, uh, which is nice. Uh, but it's been uh, it's been a good year. It's been a very busy year. There's a lot going on. Um, I uh, last year I had a newborn daughter. Now she's one year old and she's starting to walk. So. It, it, it opens up a whole new world of, of uh, not just possibilities, but problems. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's fun. No, I'm enjoying it. Last year, we actually spoke about your passion for gaming as well. And you particularly loved, at the time, Assassin's Creed. So I just wanted to quickly ask you what you've been playing this year. Well, like, uh, like many, I've uh, been thrown head deep uh, into uh, Elden Ring. Um, and I'm on my uh, my second playthrough at the moment. I always like to do one playthrough where I focus on just finishing the game, and then I play through a second time where I try to focus on doing everything. I'm a bit of a completionist, which in games like Elden Ring and Assassin's Creed really causes me a lot of issues um, and a lot of pain. <laughs> but uh, but I'm enjoying it when I get the time to. <laughs> This is actually the third consecutive year of Gamers Without Borders. Now, I'd like to ask you what that means to you personally. Well, it means a lot. Um, the amount of good we've been able to do through these events and showcase that gaming is not just the old theory that people, or the old thought and perception that people had of it, of you know people in a basement you know wasting their time. It's a profession. Uh, it, it is a hobby. But now it's also an avenue to do good for the world. Um, and that's one of the things that, that I'm proud to showcase is this is a part of who gamers are. You know, they're, they're not just one thing. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud to, uh, to be a part of it. Well, focusing on this year in particular, what's so special about this year's edition of Gamers Without Borders? Well, there are three things that really differentiate this year from the last two for me. Uh, one is we've changed the um, focus from being COVID focused to now folk being more value based. Uh, so we're working with our partner charities, uh, Direct Relief, UNICEF, UNHCR, Gabi the Vaccine Alliance, uh, the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center. Um, and we're working with them on the values that they have and saying, what we donate to you, we want you to use in the best way possible, rather than narrowing their focus on just COVID. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm really excited about, because I feel like that gives us the way to do the most good. Um, and that may include COVID and it may not, but it gives us the opportunity to do the most good, which is, is very exciting for me. Uh, number two is, you know, we've kind of upped the stakes a little bit. Uh, we're launching uh, this summer uh, an inaugural flagship uh, gaming and esports event in Saudi. And so as an added bit of incentive, we're allowing the uh, the winners from GWB to automatically qualify to that with a, a prize pool of over $15 million. And also, we just recently launched our Saudi Esports Academy, which is uh, a series of free to all training programs aimed at people trying to develop a career, whether it's in esports or in games or in the industry as a, as a whole. And we're working in partnership with uh, the Ministry of Communications, Information Technology here in Saudi, uh, the MISC Foundation and 966, uh, which is a, another local company here, to really start to uh, up our game when it comes to the educational activities such as hackathons, webinars, uh, and just real introduction to the industry and helping people to make that, that breakthrough. It definitely does make such a huge impact because when you implement those kinds of things from a grassroots level and then allow people to grow throughout it, like the academy, it really opens the the world's eyes to the availability and you know what the esports industry can bring to the table as well. Like you said, it's not just people sitting in their basements anymore, is it? Yeah. So uh, I love that. Now, um, the. Gamers Without Borders is organized by the Saudi Esports Federation. But it's also in collaboration with ESL as well. So how important has that relationship been regarding the success of the event? 
Oh, that, that's been very, very important. Um, I mean, one, it gives us, uh, helps us create the standard of the event. I mean, it's, it's hard to match the experience that ESL has um, in the production, in the event, but also it helps strengthen our relationship with the publishers. And it gives us the opportunity to bring in some of the best games, uh, some of the most popular games um, and titles in the world, which allows us to attract not just the best gamers, but the most people uh, to our our cause. Um, and it's not just the uh, players who are winning prize pools and donating to charity, but every time you come visit, there's the opportunity to click on the donate button and donate directly to one of the charities. So the bigger the titles we can bring in, and that's expanding every year um, as this grows, the more people we can bring into the site, the more that can be donated to these charities, the more good that can be done. Um, so that's been a huge huge part and a huge boon to what we're doing uh, based on um just last year's competition we had over 14.2 million people um watch uh, come to the elite streamers um the elite stream last year with 43 million views of its match content online and on the community side we had over 400,000 sign up and play for a combined 1.1 million hours in the community gaming platform which is open to all gamers. Um, and so, you know, being able to attract the top games, the best talent and showcase to them some of the top production. Uh, and I mean, let's not forget some of the best hosts as well uh, and casters. Um, uh, we, uh, I mean, without you, not without me, ESL, not without the community, <laughs> we, really, we really wouldn't be able to do any of the good we're doing. So, um, I mean, it's, I just want to give a big thank you to ESL. A thank you to, uh, Obviously, you being one of the faces of this, everyone behind the scenes, but also everyone who comes out and plays, whether it's professionals or community, and donates. I mean, every one of you is making a difference. So, thank you. I mean, thank you so much for your kind words. I mean, it's absolutely our pleasure to get involved and we absolutely love it as well. And if you want to find that donation button, if you're watching this, it's just watch.gamerswithoutborders.com and you'll find all the information on the site there. Now, speaking of partners as well, we also saw that Aramco, who is one of the biggest companies in the world, has become a strategic partner this year in Gamers Without Borders. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, we're absolutely thrilled uh, to have Ar Aramco on board as a strategic partner for this year's edition. And we look at this as a stepping stone as we move forward in the future to bringing on more partners. Uh, again, the bigger we can grow this, the more impact we can have. Um, and it's just another stepping stone to showcase how GWB is bigger this year than ever. And we intend to keep developing this and making sure that this as a platform, as it grows, is able to maximize uh, everything that we're doing and maximize the good that we're doing. And one of the things that's come out of actually our partnership with, um, with Aramco is GWB will be able to host the Aramco Sim Racing Program, which is a grassroots initiative that aims to scout, select, and coach uh, the most promising talents uh, from Saudi Arabia, but also from the world uh, for sim racing. And we're really excited about this addition to the festival, and we're excited to add this to what we're doing um, in the local community as well. It's actually something that I've noticed a lot more recently as well. Sim racing is growing at an exponential rate, and it really is so interesting to see. I actually had the opportunity to use a sim uh, recently, and they're so advanced now. I actually felt like I was driving a real car. It was bananas. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, each year with Gamers Without Borders, though, there are normally common goals or pillars um, that the event is actually built upon. What are this year's pillars? We have at, at the heart of it is four main pillars. It's watch, game, learn and, and donate. Obviously, watch is our professional pillar. So come watch the professional players, the best of their sport, um, play their play their sport. Um, game is our community platform where everyone can come. And I mean, again, get back to the heart of what, what we do, and that's gaming, and have a little bit of fun. Um, you know, with everything going on in the world, it's important to give people a little avenue um, to, um, to escape and have a little bit of fun, while also knowing that you can do good. Uh, and that was when we come to donate. You know, while you're spending some time to get away and have some fun, you can also donate and have that time be used for good and for the benefit of others. Um, and then the learn uh, is something that, again, uh, is very close to my heart, and it's an association with the Ministry of Communications here. 
and uh, the, the other organizations I mentioned, 966 um, being one of them, uh, to really start to showcase. I mean, one of the things that I find is really misunderstood when people talk about this as an industry. People always think too technically about gaming and they think, you know, if you're not a coder, then you have no business and this is an industry. And the industry is so much bigger than that. I mean, really, anything anyone has a passion to do, there is a career path within gaming to do it. I mean, whether you write, whether you act, whether you just like to talk, whether you uh, are knowledgeable about a game, whether you like to coach, play, uh, production, literally anything you are passionate about doing, anything you have a talent in, there is a, a pathway here. And so, you know, you don't need to separate your passion from your uh, career path, which is, uh, which is fun to showcase. I mean, speaking of passion, uh... Just by listening to you speaking about gaming just goes to show you how passionate you are about gaming. I can just hear it in your voice when you start speaking about it. It's fantastic. Now, uh, we also have a theme here at Gamers Without Borders, don't we? It's uh, gaming for good, which is, you know, a very nice short and sweet motto. In the UK, we have a phrase that says, it's exactly what it says on the tin, which I think <laughs> is, is a perfect analogy for that kind of phrase or motto. Can you please elaborate a little bit more about gaming for good? What we're trying to do is get back to basics and try to simplify. I mean, this is an international and global platform for international good. Um, and it really is, as you said, what it says on the tin. It's how, how do we ha allow people to game and still do good? Um, by pursuing their passion and giving them an avenue to pursue that passion, how can they still support uh, causes around the world uh, and people around the world? Because that's essentially what this comes down to is people. Um, you know, over the last two years, we were able to donate over $20 million to COVID-19 relief and vaccine distribution. And um, this year with our partners, being able to go back to, as I said earlier, that value base where we're partnering on agreed values rather than a specific narrow um, uh, cause as, as COVID was. And I mean, we did a lot of good in COVID, but uh, to be able to expand that to do the most good. I mean, with uh, direct relief, we are uh, they're dedicating their donations to increasing access to medicine for vulnerable people in more than 100 countries worldwide. With International Medical Corps, uh, they're do dedicating donations to fast intervention in emergencies around the world from natural disasters to war affected communities. Uh, UNICEF is dedicating donations to children affected by conflicts and wars to support and protect them before, during and after conflicts. Um, UNHCR, uh, which uh, we've partnered with as SEF and as um, GWB, uh, is dedicating their donations to support refugees and displaced people around the world with the goal of raising awareness and garnering support for their critical needs in numerous areas, including health, shelter, um, sanitation, livelihoods. Uh, and then with Gavi, uh, the Vaccine Alliance, they're dedicating its donations to the zero dose children in lower income countries who are not immunized and leaving them vulnerable to the world's most deadly diseases, not just COVID, but things that we take for granted. Um, and then with the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, they're dedicating donation funds to manage coordinate, and coordinate relief activities on the international level to ensure the provision of food security, health, water sanitation, and hygiene around the world. So it's really taking things to the core of what we believe in and how do we help the most people rather than relying on one specific cause and there's a there's a saying in Arabic, you know, leave the bread to the baker. So rather than telling these amazing organizations what to do with their money or what to do with the money that they're being given, it's allowing them to tell us where is that money needed most? Where can it do the most good? Um, and allowing the gamers to be able to choose then what avenue they want to do the most good in rather than what we think is the right uh, right avenue to go. I mean, during the live broadcasts, even of, we've been speaking to some of the players and we've been able to interview some of them before each of the tournaments. And they've said, you know, we get to give back, but by doing something that we absolutely love to do on a day to day basis. And, you know, that at its core is the best thing that you can do in life. You know, they love gaming and by gaming, they are then 
able to donate to charities to people that are less fortunate than themselves. And so I really think it is absolutely incredible. And I have to say, Your, Your Highness, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you as always. And uh, I'm always so happy to see how much you're accomplishing through Gamers Without Borders. And of course, with this flagship event later in the year, it's going to be amazing for the esports industry in itself. Uh, would you like to say anything before we before we go? Well, it's, um, I mean, the one thing I'd like to close on is, is the thing that always gets me very excited is there's so many opportunities in gaming to do more. Um, and really, our philosophy here, not just with GWB, but everything we're trying to do at the Saudi Federation and everything we're advocating on a national, global, uh, regional and global stage is how can we in gaming be additive and not subtractive? Uh, how can we add to what's happening, add to the community, add to the tournaments rather than take things away? Um, and I think there are so many avenues and so many ways to add to what's happening on the global stage. Uh, and even if you do something on a national level, no matter where you are in the world, gaming is a global phenomenon. So no matter what you do, you have to keep an eye on that global stage and make sure that what you're doing is additive for everyone. Because at the end of the day, when you do something good in gaming, you're growing that for the whole global community. And uh, I mean, I just, again, want to thank everyone who's a part of this. Um, every single person who takes part in this is, is really making that step to be additive and do good for the global community and not just the global gaming community. So I think that's, that's what I wanted to close on. Just a, a big thank you. Once again, thank you so much for joining me, Your Highness. And we look forward to hearing more from you as we approach the flagship event later in the year. But for now, thank you so much. Thank you.